welcome guys to the second session here at Radio Parts. Um, have we all met? I'm Paul. Do you know me? I don't know. Seen you, me about. You've seen me about? Yeah. yeah okay, fair <laughs> enough. Um, I think this is the fifth time I've been here. Five years we've been doing this every year, so it's very good to be back for another session. Um, I estimate it'll take about 45 to 50 minutes to run through my three big topics I've got listed here, which is AV receivers, when we're launching them, new features explain what they are, and some technologies that are in them now and coming out next year, would you believe? We're gonna talk a little bit about that. Take you through our new soundbar range that is, so we've got one model at the moment, it's going to become very quickly four, and then maybe even five next year, so lots of good stuff coming through there. And then we've got a new powered speaker range where it's where HEOS speakers are going into next year. Um, and that will be the time where we need to turn off the camera and we can't record that because it's all not in the public domain yet, okay? So that's my plan, how's that sound? 45, 50 minutes tops, done and dusted. So, hello, we're Qualify. We distribute all these brands. Uh, Denon is a huge part of our business. It's a, the biggest brand in the company. Uh, it was founded, if you don't know, by this man, Michael Hendrickson, in 1982. He's a, a Danish fellow who moved to Australia and set up Yamo Australia, and then he, over the process of many decades, began knocking boxes over. <laughs> so, sorry about that. I'll just put that back there. And um, our recent acquisition was Klipsch in 2017. Um, we employ a lot of, there's about 35 people in total in the company but we've got representation all over Australia, but we're mainly, obviously our head office is here in Victoria with all of us, and then we've got a good uh, set of t uh, people up in New South Wales as well. So that's Qualify for you. So that's a little bit about us. I've been with Qualify on and off for about 12 years. I left about six years ago and came back. Um, and I had a good big stint with, a, with Yamaha as well for about 10 years. I've been doing this for about 23 years. I've been getting up in front of people talking about stuff. So I'm hopeful this will be useful information for you and you walk away going with stuff you didn't know before. So that's my goal, okay? All good? Good. Now, let's begin with our range of 2019 AV receivers. This is an easy uh, subject this year because it's not seven new models. Basically, it's three or four. So they're not changing the entire range. Here is a timeline and here we are right on the 1st of November. Here are the models we used to sell including this one which has been out for so long it's actually way back over here the AVRX 1600 that replaced the 1500 but you can see these new models we've got four new models rolling through this is one you may not have heard of this is a stereo AV receiver stereo not 5.1 not 7.1 two channels only I'm going to show that to you this is something you would not have heard of either this is a five channel networking HEOS receiver for the first time under $1,000, never been there before. This obviously replaces the 2500 and is already out, and this replaces the 3500 and is already out. Just a week or two ago, we started shipping. But notice, please, we might need to move these boxes. Um, <laughs> the, two, the, three big receivers, the three big receivers are all continuing on into next year. Probably won't be replaced for at least uh, nine months, I suspect, maybe longer. So the three big ones you see here, good to go for moving forward. All right, all clear, all good. Let's have a look at the DRA 800. At a glance, it looks like a normal AV receiver. I would like to point out something that makes it not a normal AV receiver. Bass, treble, and balance. Like an old school, normal stereo amp. Original, traditional stuff, okay? AV receivers do not have that. The rear panel looks a bit like an AV receiver. You'll notice there's no component video. There's no com uh, composite video. It's all focused on HDMI for its video sources and not, not enough speaker terminals perhaps. There's only four because it's a stereo amp but it has another old school feature like this. It runs speakers A and B should you wish to do so. All right, cool stuff. It's got HEOS, it's got Bluetooth, it's got Wi-Fi, dual band. It's got a DAB plus digital tuner. It's the first Denon full-size component we've ever had that actually has a DAB Plus digital tuner inside it, okay? Got FM as well. AirPlay 2, phono input, old school phono input. Two subwoofer outputs though. What an interesting product this is, a real crossover between traditional hi-fi and modern technology. Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, and even a Zone 2 preamp output. So attach another amp and speakers 
So you can play one HDMI source in, the, in your music in, the, in that room while sending another source out into another room using that Zone 2 socket there. Really cool. Limited stock means I haven't bought enough. Uh, I expected $12.99 to be a very considered purchase. Turns out I was wrong and it's selling much faster than I budgeted for. So if you ordered one now, you wouldn't get one probably till January. I'm so sorry. But what a great, do you, what do you think? It's a great stereo amp. Well, I love, I love, oh, geez, this 1980s song I'm playing, I don't like, there's not enough bass. Oh, I'll just turn it up a bit. Bam. Straightforward, simple, easy control. Now, this is a HEOS thing though, so it's still got the HEOS app. It's still technology, it's fantastic. So, yeah, there you go. Quick question. Yes. Zone 2 output. Yes. In terms of source selections for that output, you can pick any of the... Any of the sources. The it's exactly like... So the question was, um, and I'm doing this for the camera, um, any source to Zone 2 totally selectable? Absolutely, yes. You can say this main zone, this source, second zone, done. At whatever source you wish. DIB plus radio, whatever. Yeah. Here's another new product, the AVR-S650. So you will be familiar with AVR-X and maybe AVC-X, but this is an S. This range of S-series receivers was built originally for North America, for chains like Best Buy, and just now they've decided to widen the production of these from 110 volt versions only to 240 volt versions for the rest of the world. Well, for Europe, Europe, which means we can buy it. So we have, and there it is. So this is a five channel networking HEOS receiver. Still has a phono input, like it's a really good value. We're under a thousand bucks, first time ever for a five channel networking Denon AVR. It's in stock right now. You could order one today and have it tomorrow, or Monday as the case may be. So we've just started shipping it now. We don't have a lot this year, but we go crazy next year and are adding a lot of this into the range next year. So please feel free to get into this one as well. So these are the two new AV components I wanted to talk to you about. Now I'm listing a bunch of stuff here and some of these I'm gonna now talk about as part of the bigger story. So the bigger story is those four models I've mentioned um, they've got eight new features that aren't in last year's range. I'm going to take you through them because they're pretty much exclusive to these new models only, which is this weird scenario where the AVRX 3600 has features that the 4500 doesn't have and won't have. So it's different, okay? I've got a 3600 at home right now and I'm loving it, and I, you'll see why as we go. So. Let's go through the new features. So we're going to do them as, as features as groups rather than this model's got that and this model's got that. You'll see how this all works. So the first new feature I want to mention actually isn't out yet. It was due to be released about a week ago and it's been delayed, but that's okay. November, mid-November is the target for new firmware to be released for all of these models to add Bluetooth transmission from the AVR to any type of Bluetooth cord wireless headphones. All right. This solves a big problem because we've had many customers, I can't hear it, my husband. You know, that issue will just go away now, finally. So there's two modes. One, you can just be, it's two o'clock in the morning, you want to watch a movie and everyone's asleep, put the headphones on, transmit, done. Or we're all together watching a film and I'm deaf as a post. I can put the headphones on and listen to the film being transmitted while all you guys enjoy the sound coming through the speakers. So there's two different ways it can operate. How it works, don't know yet because it's not released yet. Mid-November, I'm told, is when it gets released to those models. Pretty cool. Any questions? How many outputs on the Bluetooth thing? Just the one? Don't know. Damn good question. Question was how many outputs can it transmit to two pairs of headphones? I don't know. Damn it. No one's asked me that before. He deserves it. Can we have a prize, please? <laughs> Wouldn't it be pair? And do, do other brands offer more than one pair of headphones? Is that right? A gadget to fix this problem. Yeah, right. No wonder. I swear, for decades, I go back to my days at the other company, that question, sound reinforcement for hard of hearing, has been lingering for decades in our industry. And zone two outputs to RF transmitting headphones and getting the volume adjusted. Nah, and these are old people that don't want to have to worry about 
jigging around with stuff, you know? So this is a, a really great step forward for us. I, I, know, I know other brands do similar types of things, but this is a great addition for the Denon story for sure. Uh, good, thank you. All right, that's a big new feature. Here is a, a, another big new feature that is a, a great change. You're playing a Blu-ray 4K movie in your home theatre. It might be 5.1, 7.1 or Dolby Atmos. It doesn't matter. But then you've got to cook dinner and you've got speakers in your kitchen with another amp running them. So you turn on your zone two and you pump the sound of the movie because you don't want to miss it into the kitchen. Up until this range, the theatre would get downgraded automatically to stereo, PCM. And then you can press a Dolby ProLogic surround mode and manually make it a bit surroundy, well, the old school method. But the multi-channel audio is gone. Not anymore. Now the theatre will stay in full discrete audio while the second speakers in the kitchen get the down mix stereo version. First time it's been done and it applies to all these new models except for the DRA800 because it's a stereo product in the first place. So, uh, but it applies to all the new AV receivers that have come out now. Great improvement. New DSP chip. Actually, it's partly HEOS DSP technology is the reason it's happening. It's HEOS that's enabling that feature. It's all done inside a chip. So it's a different method of doing it. Very cool. Any questions? Good. Excellent. We're doing really well. Thank you very much. I think we're doing really well. I hope you think we're doing really well too. <laughs> uh, automatic HDMI rename applies to all these models. I plugged a Sony Blu-ray player into this receiver and within five seconds the input got renamed to that, the model number of the product. If that's too geeky for the customer, the customer can change it to say 4K or Sony or something if they want, manually type it in, but it automatically grabs data from the, from the source device now. So plug an Apple TV in, guess what? It just instantly gets renamed Apple TV. I know it, I've done it, okay? they will all be renamed Apple TV and then... <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's... Uh, yeah, very good. Um, so you can manually rename them, of course, if no you... No numeric order? Like... Big pun? No numeric order. No numeric order. No, it's not that clever. <laughs> no, she's not that clever. Not that clever. Okay, so there's that. That's another new feature that applies to all of them. Here we go. This is two features together grouped on one slide. The setup assistant. Now, this is the graphics for DRA 800. So it has a menu, it has a setup assistant. It doesn't have Odyssey. They don't think it needs it because it's a stereo amplifier. That's fair enough, that's their call. But now when you're going through the setup assistant, it offers you the option in the menu and all the new models do. Do you want to name this instead of just leaving it DRA 800? Do you want to call it living room or theater or whatever? And you can choose a name from the list, a little customer service feature and stops you having to manually type one in. Little nice tip touch, but also a new Control switch for AirPlay has been introduced because if I have not three Apple TVs but one attached to one of these amplifiers and I open up my Apple phone and I choose AirPlay and up pops DRA800 Apple TV and I can choose which one I want. Well, I could, oh, come on, I don't need two in one room. I'll just turn off the Denon one and just use the Apple TV one to send my music to. I've got an Apple TV fourth generation. The CEC control is awesome. You guys, any of you have an Apple TV fourth generation? The handshaking for CEC is perfect. So when you play your song, AirPlay, Apple TV, select, it tells the Denon receiver to turn on, changes to the Apple TV input, and starts playing, just like it's built in. So consumer electronics control is fan. Apple have really got their act together now in this fourth generation. Even when you turn off the Apple TV, it tells the amp to turn off and the telly. So the Apple TV really takes control of the whole thing. So it's a really weird way to plug Apple uh, about my on-off AirPlay feature, but that's basically what I'm doing here. <laughs> so you can leave it turned on if you want to and just stream directly to the Denon receiver because it'll sound fantastic. Okay, so that's two features, preset room names introduced and AirPlay 2. So this is Atmos Height Virtualizer. This is so the standard speaker experience when you don't have Dolby Atmos fires speakers directly at you at 5.1 down here. We have an immersive Dolby virtual experience where they can use DSP processing to create an overhead effect. Before you glaze over completely about this, DTS did this first with DTS Virtual X. And it was a way to have someone who doesn't, just got 5.1 system, all at ground normal height level and you're sitting there watching your movie. You don't have toppers, no topper speakers to bounce the sound up. 
what are you going to do? Well, we'll create a virtual effect that processes it and creates this effect. And I went, yeah, great, thanks, as if that's going to be any good. It's fantastic. It's the best virtual effect we've ever heard. It's remarkable. I'm amazed by it. Dolby realised that they needed one too to compete, and that's this. It has to be added with new firmware. So when you sell one of these AV receivers and your customers network it, within two minutes it'll probably say new firmware is available and that'll update. And then two minutes after that, it'll probably say, hey, there's a new feature to add called Atmos Height Virtualizer. Do you want to why not add that in? So there's two updates that has to be done. In fact, I've stolen all my own thunder to bring up all these pictures. So before you upgrade it, it says that, Dolby Audio True HD plus surround. After you upgrade it, it'll say Dolby Atmos Dolby surround after the new firmware's added. When would it say that? If I'm running an AV receiver in stereo or five point, anything less than Dolby Atmos. It'll still, it'll now offer you an Atmos effect mode that it wouldn't do before. So it's okay. Um, it, to me, it sounds just as good as the DTS one, but you know, it'll be depending on content will really be the reason it'll work or not. So that's new firmware that has to be added to add it into these three models only, only the, the bigger three Denon receivers. The ones that actually have Atmos built in actually are the only ones that can decode the virtual version of it, of course. All good? Thank you, excellent, push on. Okay, eARC, have you all heard of eARC? Yep, Enhanced Audio Return Channel, does two things. One, it lets a Netflix app inside a television send a Dolby Atmos sound down the cable to your AV receiver. That's the difference between eARC and normal ARC, enhanced audio return channel versus normal. The reason it can do that is because it's actually sending a Dolby Digital Plus soundtrack, which embeds the Atmos soundtrack inside it. That's how it works, okay? So, we're told Sony and LG say yes to enhanced audio return channel. We're gonna support it. So if a customer is using the Netflix app inside their telly as the source, you could send an Dolby Atmos movie down to a Denon receiver. Good to go, all right? We're also told Samsung have said, well, we don't think anyone wants Dolby Digital Plus audio coming back from the telly, so we're not gonna support eARC. That's what we've been told, that Samsung have said no, other brands are saying yes. Little handy information update there for you. So, this is too much information on one slide and it's really small. But this is a list of HDMI differences between 1, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, all the way up to the new 2.1 HDMI that isn't out yet. Okay? And all the new features that get added. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 new features for HDMI 2.1. They're all listed here. And I've highlighted two of them. I've highlighted Enhanced Audio Return Channel and I've highlighted Auto Low Latency Mode. Because we have those technologies in our products already, both of them. But do we have HDMI 2.1? It's a loaded question. We do not. None of these AV receivers this year have HDMI 2.1. So how do we have these two features? The chipsets are so good, they support them. They're not certified to support them, but they do. That's why they support two of the seven features. These other features, we do not have those features and won't until we have HDMI 2.1 AV receivers next year towards, I think, probably September, I think is when we'll begin releasing those. Because that actually does mean we'll also have 8K capable AV receivers that switch our 8K signal. Because that's the real thing about HDMI 2.1. It seems to be two things. 8K video, <laughs> hey, cool, and all these features here are about gamers, gaming. Now, if you're not a gamer, you will glaze over very quickly about these features. But every now and again, I talk to someone about these, and the gamers who love Xbox get really excited about an AV receiver that can pass fast frame rate signal that doesn't, hang on, let me go to this one, doesn't suffer from tearing and image breakup the way it can. So we have auto low latency mode to support Xbox right now. We don't have variable refresh rate yet. That's another Xbox feature, but we will. And we're going to support quick frame transport as well. Now, I mentioned eARC, we have, and I mentioned all on auto low latency mode. In fact, I'm now reversing, going right back to our flagship Denon receiver here, 
It supports enhanced audio return channel and auto low latency mode going back five years. They added it with new firmware in August last year to all these products going backwards. So this is partly the reason we haven't seen new big receivers this year. Firmware gets thrown backwards in time to add features to products that we never expected. The chipsets are just so good that they could add this technology back in. Dolby Vision was rolled backwards through the range as well. When it came out, they added it three or four years backwards into the range. So this is the reason we have two of the features of HDMI 2.1 already out, and we don't have, none of these receivers are 8K. None of them are, okay? Is that all clear and good? I know it's a lot to take in. Yeah, so there you go. But funny, just a little notice, your Xbox doesn't tell you it's running in all low latency mode. The AVR won't tell you, your television will. It'll say, yeah, we're in game mode. It was what Panasonic call it, game mode. And then you know everything's running at the fast rate. So there you go. So we talked about that, there we go. And now, a little comment about 8K or 4K at 120 frames per second, which is the same amount of data involved as 8K. No HDMI 2.1 consumer source devices yet exist in the market. At least this is back from when I got this information about four or five months ago, okay? But things are changing. In Japan, last year, NHK television started transmitting in 8K because they've got the Olympics next year. So they're gearing up for some really cool transmission of the Olympics, it's fabulous. Sharp began shipping an 8K television, which of course they're out now. But they also started shipping an 8K recorder that uses no less than four HDMI cables to transfer the picture across to the television. So that's sort of semi-proprietary, um, and it's not the solution long term, obviously, but they're out only in Japan. Can you get that sort of technology happening right now? And I don't know what it costs either. And of course, professional 8K cameras exist, projectors exist, it's all existing, but they all use special, to watch native 8K, they're all using proprietary special connections that aren't the consumer version yet. HDMI 2.1 will apparently fix all these and we'll end up with one cable sending down an 8K signal. I'm not sure how, how long that would be, but we'll find out. So, you would have heard of HDR10, you've probably heard of HDR10+, Plus, which is the dynamic version of HDR10. Samsung invented it. Um, Panasonic support it. Variable refresh rate, Samsung support it. Xbox use it. And HDCP 2.3. Have you heard of that? No? You've heard of HDCP 2.2? Okay. There's a 2.3. Is it compatible? Rest assured, yes it is. Fully backwards compatible with a TV that's 2.2 and a source device that's 2.2 fully compatible, do not worry. It's something to do with the keys that HDMI uses to talk to each other. They got updated, but it doesn't cause any compatibility issues. Unlike a 4K AVR from four years ago, from any brand that is not 4K compliant, but even though it says 4K on the box, yeah, but the copy protection is out of date. Sorry, you gotta, yeah. So that doesn't cause that problem, relax. In the future, i.e. next year, we will support HDR10+, 8K 60Hz and 4K 120Hz, and these extra three gamers features for HDMI 2.1. It's all going to happen next year. Probably, knowing how things work, the top three models will be upgraded, and maybe the bottom ones will be left. You know what I mean? They'll introduce it at the top and then filter it through as time passes. Good, so that's my little technology update for you, which I hope you found useful and interesting. Okay. Back to another new feature called Sports Bar Mode. It applies to all the new models, okay? Sports Bar Mode is designed very simply and easily to let you watch a HDMI picture, but then choose an analog, optical, or coax audio instead to listen to while you watch the picture. Hence the name Sports Bar Mode. How does it work? You go into the menu of the AV receiver. Here are the inputs. This is the input assign screen. Now, two little tricky things I've already done for this screenshot. I've assigned HDMI one, one, two, three times to the three different inputs. So every time I choose those three inputs, it's actually looking at the same socket on the back. Okay, that's new. That didn't happen before. The second thing that's new is this input mode column. This didn't exist before. Auto means, yep, look for the picture on HDMI, look for the sound off HDMI. And that's what you would normally do. 
But now we can manually tell it, no, look for digital, look at digital, and then you say, look at digital one or two or three or four. No, with this input, don't look at HDMI audio, look at an analog socket, in this case, say number three. And it's fixed, it's locked in, it's permanent. So in my example here, which admittedly isn't perfect, I'll admit, <laughs> I've got three inputs that I now rename Foxtel sound, when I want to watch Foxtel and listen to Foxtel. Foxtel plus Apple TV, when I want to play some music off Apple Music while I watch the cricket. Boom. Oh no, I would like to play some records while I watch Foxtel. I have a special input here where I've assigned an analog input. Now this is why my example's not perfect, because it's not the phono input. You can't assign the phono input to these, it's, uh, it's separate. So you'd have to get a turntable with a preamp, like a Denon turntable, and plug it into CD input or something, and then it would work. So it's, my example's not perfect. And the other reason, full disclosure, that my example's not perfect, Apple doesn't have an optical out anymore on their damned fourth generation Apple TV. <laughs> they ditched it. So if you have a third generation Apple TV with optical out, my story works perfectly. But yeah, so you, but you get the idea of how this works to patch together picture and sound from different source devices. So this is a new feature that applies to these products. That was pretty good, I think, Johnsy. Yep. <laughs> Any questions? Anything? I no, that wasn't right. No, good. Good. Excellent. Really minor new change to the smart select functions or the quick select, depending on on what it is. So you, you want to play a song at a particular volume or a playlist, and you want to have speakers running around your house in multiple zones, whatever it is. You get it all running and you get the volume right, you then press one of these buttons and hold it, bang, and it remembers them all for the next time you want to recreate it. So then you go away, you turn it all off, you come back, you pick up the remote, you press that, boom, 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 boom. All these things that you saved are restored back to the way it was, including now all zone stereo. So you might have speakers in the kitchen, like I talked about before. You might have a HEOS 7 sitting out in the bedroom and you're streaming music to all of them at once in the theatre, in the kitchen and out in, the, in the whatever room I just said, the bedroom. You go save, save it on button one and then you can recall it and go bang, all zone stereo again with the press of one button. Nice new feature, add it into the list of all the other features that it remembers. Good. And one last thing about something that applies only to the big flagship Denon receiver. Maybe you're aware that this is a 13 channel AVR. It's a beast. Weighs 24 kilos. You do have one, one stock ready to go. Fantastic. So, have you heard of DTX, DTX Pro? <coughs> no, I'm not surprised. They're not making much of a fuss about it yet. I'm not 100% sure when we're going to release the firmware for this, but it's on the roadmap, I'm told. So this runs uniquely six overhead effect speakers. Dolby Atmos has specified up to 10 overhead effect speakers eventually, but the chipsets in our flagship will run six speakers, 13 channels. So seven speakers down below, six overhead and two subwoofers. DTS does not support that. So you put on a DTS X movie, the most speakers you can hear overhead are four because it's a limitation of the software until Pro comes out. Pro firmware gets released and then DTS catches up to Dolby and will now run six overhead effect speakers like Dolby do. Okay? I'd like to think it's gonna happen when the uh, upgrade for Bluetooth transmission comes out, but I'd be bullshitting because I don't think that is joined together. <laughs> so we'll see what happens when it comes out. Good, that's DTSX Pro. The last thing I wanna cover before we get to sound bars is this. Have you heard of IMAX Enhanced? No? Cool, okay. IMAX Enhanced is, guess what? It involves IMAX, but it also involves DTS. They partnered together with some movie houses, Sony, Paramount, to come up with a new home entertainment standard experience for watching movies at home. And I will explain what it is. There's four key parts that make it cool. The first thing is it uses HDR10. It uses 4K, it's not a 2K thing, it's only 4K. But the images are full 16 by nine. And you go, big deal. No, you'll see why, that that's actually cooler than you think. I'll explain how that works. 
It's mastered for video and film noise elimination. IMAX, have you been to the Carlton IMAX? It's pretty damn big. In fact, the biggest ones are three storeys high. Can you imagine the film grain noise? You're transmitting something that was this big into something that's three storeys high. IMAX have had to work on proprietary noise reduction technology that they own and invented to clean up pictures to make them transmit digitally in a much, they still look like film, still look like film, but they transmit with all the grain noise removed. So any movies released in IMAX Enhanced will be cleaned up to look like that. Two, new, two important things. Third important thing, display devices. Sony is the biggest company behind this for televisions and projectors, but other companies are now on board that do display devices as well. They have a website about this. When you add, when you, when you, add, when you play an IMAX movie, the television will detect in the signal that it's IMAX and adjust its picture settings to suit and make it look better than a non-IMAX movie will automatically. Okay, that's what the television does. But full dynamic range audio with a special version of DTSX. So DTSX is like Dolby Atmos, overhead effects. And DTSX is like that. But when you play a, D, a Dolby, a Dolby, a, a, a IMAX enhanced movie, the AVR gets a flag that says, oh, I've got to go to special mode and changes the crossover points of all the channels specifically for IMAX enhanced. Because the movies are not mixed in the same way as a traditional Blu-ray or 4K, most of them are mixed in what they call near field uh, recording, compressed. They take the bottom end and push it up a bit and they take the top end and make it a bit flatter. They're not as dynamic as they could be. These will be released much, much broader compression than a normal Blu-ray or 4K movie is released at. I've got lots of other slides that I've all hidden because I could go into real details of it. It's really cool, but I'm not, I'm going to spare you. Remember I promised you 45, 50 minutes? That's my goal. So these are the four things. Now, on the disc, these two features are on the disc. So you get an IMAX disc. You don't need a Denon receiver. You don't need a Sony television. You can enjoy the benefits straight off the disc. But these two, you do need a television that has IMAX enhanced and the sound benefits can only be reproduced with a Denon um, AVR, well, and Marantz, but just that's for the record, okay? So there you go, okay. So what is it? So you get a 4K Blu-ray. Most 4K Blu-rays are mastered for multiplexes. 21 by nine, 2.35 to one, huge widescreen experience. This is Mission Impossible 5. It was made in IMAX. They used IMAX film to film it. All the IMAX, all the, all the Mission Impossible movies were filmed in IMAX, okay? When it comes to releasing it for the Chadston Shopping Centre, they take the original IMAX negative, which is almost square. They are so big, because remember, they're aiming at three storeys high, filling your field of vision. They've got to be like this. So the negatives are a very different shape. They crop it all the way down to super widescreen and release it to Chadston Shopping Centre and High Point and whatever. Okay? When you go to see it in IMAX, you're seeing the same scene like this. You probably don't realise it, but it's actually a completely different aspect ratio. It ain't widescreen, it's IMAX, it's unique. Now poor old IMAX realised we've got this version of Mission Impossible 5 that we release when the movie comes out and we go to Carlton and pump it out, and then a few weeks, months later, it shuts down and the, that version of the film gets put back in its vault at I, IMAX and that's the end of the story. Hang on, why don't we reissue this film on Blu-ray properly extended the way it could be for home use. So they go back to the original negative and all they do is crop it a little bit down to 16 by 9 filling your 4K panel with completely high resolution 4K images. It's not this zoomed out and cropped and lowering the resolution. It's the original IMAX negatives it's just cropped a little bit to 16 by 9 to make your full screen experience the best it can possibly be. So if I was in JB shopping and there was Mission Impossible 5 widescreen and the IMAX enhanced version on sale, but for $10 more, I'm buying that one because my 65 inch panel is gonna be full of Mission Impossible instead of having a good part of it eaten up in black bars that I could zoom in on and lower the resolution on. Much, much better to have an IMAX enhanced version. And those are other. No, no, that's exactly my point. It is not stretched. No, it is complete for, it's like pixel mapped 4K. It's awesome. Yeah. So um, I really see a huge, 75 inch tellies are, are the go now. Um, really crazy enthusiasts who love anamorphic, 
It's not for them because that is about taking that image and making it wide. But for normal 16 by 9 images, projection, in 16 by 9 projectors or big screen panels, IMAX. It's very, it's a, that's what you want, this type of experience. Okay? Sony's supporting it, Paramount is supporting it, IMAX, who makes movies, they make movies themselves, they're supporting it. And they have released three documentaries so far. They're about to release the fourth one, Turtle Odyssey, on December the 4th. Okay, can't wait for that one. In, uh... <laughs> but there is a couple of scenes in this one. I know, I know documentaries are not the greatest way to launch an exciting new audio format, are they? But there's a scene in this where the kids, are, there's these, they're in the South Pacific and these little boys dive, jumping off the, off the wharf into the water. I mean, big deal. Well, when they hit the water, it sounds like the shotgun in Terminator 2, you know, going off. When, and the, that's where you realise, shit, this is high dynamic. This is bang, and, just the, the, they, and then it goes again. It's just incredible. I can't wait to see a real movie released on IMAX Enhanced. It'll be, it will be a sonic experience. I just can't wait for it. So, Sony Pictures finally have announced they're going to release a real Hollywood movie, not a documentary, but a Hollywood movie on November the 12th. There's a website I track that tells you when 4K and 2K Blu-rays are coming out. IMAX Enhanced, Sony Pictures, Columbia TriStar, fantastic. Guess what the film is? Angry Birds 2. <laughs> <laughs> now, if, if I'm wrong, don't blame me. This website says on this date in the US, available on Amazon, will be this damned film released in IMAX Enhanced, of all the titles, okay? I'll take it. It's better than nothing. <laughs> not, not the original Angry Birds. It's the sequel to Angry Birds. <laughs> okay, so there's that. But they have, Sony have promised these will come out. They haven't said when, but they have announced these will be released in IMAX Enhanced. And 11 other titles are planned. They haven't said when, but there is a roadmap. So we'll wait and see. Um, now, Audio Active distributes Sony projectors and they're good friends with Sony. And they tell me that a streaming service that is available uniquely to Sony televisions called Privilege 4K, it says it's available in the US, but I asked them and they said, no, 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 that app works in Australia. So they're offering 4K IMAX enhanced streaming online, apparently. I, that's all secondhand, but that's what I've heard. So that was announced a fair while ago now. And in other countries, other streaming services are offering IMAX enhanced movies already. These ones we talked about, because these are all disc based. And the, is discs really the future? Really? I mean, we want streaming. We want all the good stuff streaming. So there's hope for Australia. The streaming service has to support DTS and has to support HDR10. That's easy. That's much less likely, sadly. That is, that's, that's no harm. That's easy, but that's not. So, but you never know. You just never, never know. It could happen, perhaps, down the track in Australia. Uh, so the Denon 45, 65, and 8500 all support IMAX Enhanced. The 3600 has it factory installed. You might need to add firmware to add that in, but uh, that's four models supported. Older models do not support IMAX Enhanced. It is unique to the bigger models only install. So there you go. We're doing good? Doing very well. Very, very well. Okay. Uh, okay, let's have a... This won't take long. I wanted to show you things that make the AVRX 2600 better than an AVRX 1600. Here's some rear panel shots. You can just glance and see the differences here. These are 70 watts, uh, 80 watts, 95. So this has seven HDMI, this has five. So there's, there's things that make them quite different, but there's also video chip processing in here that's better. Image Science Foundation calibration feature is available here. Uh, a better front panel display. Little things that make it a, a superior product. Looking inside them though, this is seven channels, this is seven channels. These seven channels are quite compressed into one small tight area. But when you spend up and get this one, you get much more space dedicated to discrete engineering to lower noise and clean the sound up. It's something the customer would never know looking at them from the front. But that is a superior engine. So the power supply is here. There's the edge of it creeping out that's underneath over there, maximising the space in that, in that way. Now, the next comparison, though, is my new favourite kit on the block, 
So I've got one of these, 3600, compared to the 2600. A long list of additional features here. It gets pretty serious for just the, the checklist of having features. IMAX enhanced, first time at this price point. But more power, lots of additional stuff. However, have a look at this. This has had a major, major steroidal upgrade. It used to basically look like this. And now it's got a great big new transformer and a dual extruded aluminium heatsink. So this is solid aluminium. To make that, that is a sheet of aluminium where they fold it like that and attach it to a plate. This, they take molten aluminium and squeeze it through a mould and it comes out shaped like that and then they cut it. Extruded aluminium. So this is much more better for vibration resonance, to stop vibration than these ones are. It's a real, why do you buy a better product? That's one of the reasons. This used to have one of these, and now it's got uh, five amplifiers here and four here attached to this design, this interlocking design. So if I go forward here, this is the 3500 compared to at $2,100, and the 3600 at $2,300. Bang, all that extra stuff, and look inside. You are getting a bit of free space <laughs> in the 3500. That's all gone now inside the 3600 for just $200 more. And you're picking up the extra two channels. And you're picking up seven channels has become nine with all those extra features as well. Um, so very excited about this. I couldn't wait to get one home. I'm just waiting for the Bluetooth transmission feature to be released so I can try that next. Okay, I'm loving it. I've got Yamo IC608s in times five in my, that's all I use in my little lounge room. Uh, wife acceptance factor 10 out of 10. So it sounds great. I'm really happy with it. And it's driving them fantastically. Um, so you compare that new 3600 to the 4500, all those new features aren't in the 4500 because it's a year older, but all these features here are about sound quality, which this one doesn't have. So there are strengths for both, but you'll notice when you compare them inside, this is a carbon copy of what the design principle is on a 4500. So please keep selling 4500s. We really need 4500 business tests, but that's gonna become $1,000 cheaper, it's a real hero product. So this still has three zones. Oh, this is a plastic, plastic front panel, metal front panel. You can see the, there's, there's a lot of, it's not as, not as engineered, still as good, and that's a larger power supply, and little things like that still make it, but it is more powerful. Actually, Bryce, if, if I may, I might just say, if you sell a 4500, whatever you order or qualify at the moment, we've got a promotion where you get a free Helios 5. Yeah, that's true. They're all, thrown in. All new waters, not, not, not so yeah. We're we're pushing that hard on. So an extra zone. We're pushing that hard on Facebook promotion right now. Just buy forty five hundred off you. So if someone comes in to buy it off you. We'll ship a white Heos five for free. Um, no extra charge. Yeah. Well, that's just while stocks last. Last. Yeah. So thank you for that really. <coughs> no, that See, why is the second one always better than the first? We did. We didn't do that before. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it in the third session. We'll do it in the third session. <laughs> and a final plug to help you out. These images are all off the website, but they're not side by side on the website. This is a 4500 at 3300 bucks. This is a 6500 at $5200 and the flagship at $6200. So this has nine amplifiers, this has 11. This has a heat sink that's very good. This one is equally good, but you'll notice these amplifiers are all joint, they're discrete, but they're all on Two circuit boards, bang, 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 bang. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven separate physical boards, completely physically discrete, much less crosstalk between all those channels. And yet, these two amplifiers look identical on the shelf side by side. I don't need that, I'll just buy this one, thank you very much. We have to promote pictures like this to let people see what they're getting. And I firmly believe if a customer was looking to spend $5,200 on this, and then they see what's going on for only $1,000 more inside this beast at 13 channels with a better processor chip that runs at a higher clock rate than this one does. And there's too many other features to... Look at this. That power supply at 8.5 kilos weighs nearly as much as a Denon AVRX 1600. Just that piece by itself. This is the beast. So when people see that stuff, you, you, you can't lift the hood on an AV receiver to check out what's happening, sadly. 
But they, they even go to the trouble of splitting it left and right. You know, there's a beautiful design element going on in there. But it's still really spacious to let it cool effectively as well. You know, lots of clever engineering. So yeah, I want to give that a plug. Those are all the prices. We've talked about those though. And the 3600 has had a massive upgrade as we've talked about. Now we push straight on, because I want a quick game's a good game, right? We're going to push straight into sound bars. So we've had Denon sound bars. I don't think you stock the DHTS 316, but it's available to you. And then you've got HEOS sound bars that you might have stocked and done in days gone by. So there's a little HEOS badge on a sound bar, and then you've got the HEOS brand and the Denon brand. But just for the record officially, the HEOS brand is being dissolved as a brand. It's not going to be used on any products by the end of next year, it'll probably be gone as a logo on the front of a product. So this will happen, literally has already happened. The same product will now have a Denon badge in the same exact place. So at the moment, we've already replaced some products from HEOS with Denon versions that have been tweaked a little bit sonically as well, as well as the badge. Then we've got some products that are still running with HEOS logos until Sound United, who make them, decide to replace them with either Denon badged versions or completely new versions. So that could happen. So the HEOS Link continues, the HEOS Amp continues, and the other custom features, like there's a big uh, a Super Link and a, a Drive, these rack mountable four zone stuff, all continues with the HEOS badge until they decide to replace them later on in 2020, I think. Okay? So, here's a nice little summary of what's going on with Denon and these sound bars. We'll have an entry model around about March, which has no subwoofer, but it's got woofers built in. They're telling me it sounds fantastic. This has been around for some time. We've only recently widened it for just, it's not networking, Bluetooth only, HDMI audio return. Sounds fantastic. You have access to it. This this 516H replaces the HEOS Cinema. Mm. Denon instead of uh, HEOS written here. Tweaked for Denon sound. They took the chance to revise the DSP chips to make it sound a bit more Denon-y. And then you've got the 716 with the matching worst model number in the history of model numbers. Denon subwoofer 1 uh, replaces the HEOS, HEOS sub, it was called. Okay, so it looks again cosmetically very similar. Uh, we don't need that. And this is a list of the features and price points and availability. So this will be March, we think 529, $699 available now. Better subwoofer, networking, HEOS, AirPlay 2, $1699, very low stock. We haven't brought many in yet. And then you've got the big version, 3.0 channels, add a subwoofer, add rear effects, the whole nine yards over the top of the range. So that's where it's going. And they're promising another two models to make it six models by the end of next year. So it's really going to expand out into, so you will have access, I, 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 look, I check what you buy. You don't buy sound bars much from us, but you've got access to them. You can take orders for them, no problemo, okay? Totally good to go. And, and guys, just one other thing too, the, the Heos is compatible uh, with the Denon, so the old models yeah. will work off the app. It's still working off the Heos platform. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, no, 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 yeah. so to reiterate, reiterate, because I've noticed I'm really bad at this, <coughs> HEOS continues as a technology in Denon and Marantz and other brands that Sound United own, the can, app continues, the features continue, every, and it will continually be improved and updated, but it will just be, in the same way there's a Dolby logo on the top of the AVR, there'll be a HEOS logo, it's just another technology embedded into all these products, yeah, because I've made that mistake and I should have. Thank you for bringing it up because now I'm going to. Continuing on, continuing on. No, that's yeah. Ah, now this is the bit where we need to stop recording because this isn't in the public domain yet. Thank you.